do you have the ability to mute everybody? And I do. Okay, so everyone's muted uh, um, except for me, and uh, I want to welcome everybody to the Ascent Training um, and Mastermind Club that we started uh, several weeks ago to get people to be able to qualify and go to the Ascent in beautiful Riviera Cancun, Mexico, um, next next year, next May. And um, so I'm hoping everybody's doing really well. Um, I feel like I've been gone for, well, I have been gone for about three weeks, and so I haven't been keeping up with people as, as I usually do. So I look forward to hearing about all your successes and if you have any issues. Uh, but I wanted to start by um, saying um, that I've been looking to see maybe what we should talk about now. We've got exactly four months to go. You've got November, December, January, and February to go. And um, I don't know where all of you are in your quest to getting there. Hopefully you are invited at least. Uh, if not, uh, you still need to get to bronze and get two points. And with 500 points of enrollment is what you need to get invited. So with that in mind, if you haven't you, you still have plenty of time to get to bronze and get 500 points of enrollment. Um, and for those of you who want to get it paid, but as Russell was just talking about, um, you know, you need 40 points and 1500 uh, enrollment points. And I hope everyone knows what that means. Every time that you qualify at bronze, you get two points. Um, every time you qualify at silver, you get three gold, you get uh, five and platinum, you get 10. Um, and the enrollment points are how many points you get as people sign up and come in. So they, as people come in with, they have to come in with at least 100 usually. Um, and you can go up to uh, 10, 10 cases or 1,000 points, um, enrollment points. And I, I know many people have been signing up with 10 cases recently because they want to try everything that we have. So it's kind of a, a little bit easier to talk to people about trying everything, the vitamins and the redox and the skincare system and stuff like that. Um, and that helps you qualify even faster. So I like to break things down if I'm going to um, look at a goal. And so say since, we're our, since we've already been doing this for a, a month or two now that we have, um, that we need about 30 points left to go and we need enrollments of a thousand at least points <clears throat> and people might want more than that of course but but i always like to set my goal and so i put down the numbers and then i start breaking it down as to per month and then week and then day and that's how i like to accomplish goals um it just makes it easier for me i'm a kind of a math science person so i like to break things down so the one thing you'd need to know is how many people approximately do you need to speak to in order to get somebody excited and want to at least come in as a preferred customer. Um, although that won't help too much with assent, but at least, or to come in as, as an associate, I'll just speak associate wise. Uh, and so I'm going to say that somebody in a, in a SIA, it seems to be a much higher rate of people that do that, but I'm just going to say that it's, 10 people. For every 10 people you talk to, one person signs up and comes in. So you're going to need to talk to 10 people before one gets in. So again, then I would set a goal for how many people you'd like to sign up per week. Um, and this is all about helping your business grow plus getting to a cent. So there's that as the bonus there. So if you're really pushing it and, and through February, you want to get at least one person in a week, but maybe it's two or three, and it, that will help you decide, you know, how many people you're going to talk to and things, then you are going to say, I need to talk to 10 people a week to get in one person or 20 people a week to get in two people. And I'll just keep it simple like that. So then you're going to break it down to daily and say you take a couple of days off. So you work for a full five days. Uh, for a sense, you might push yourself a little bit more. And maybe you're going to work all seven and talk to people seven days a week. And again, you can go out and play. You can make it a game, make it fun for yourself. Go out and see how many people you can talk to 
when you're out at the grocery store or you're out at some of your network meetings or maybe you're going flying someplace you can talk to people on a plane um you can look for meetups you can look for all kinds of stuff and just go out um i know danny doyle talks to everybody everywhere <laughs> any place he is he, he can be in a hotel lobby and talk to people um we were in a spa in sweden and tammy tammy signed somebody up because uh, she was talking to her her massage therapist about this um so you can really talk to people anywhere so make it a game at least and just start talking to people don't even if you're a little bit afraid still don't even bring up asia to begin with but that would probably come up eventually at, if you're talking to somebody so talk to 10 people um a week which would be depending on how many days you want to put in uh two people a day if you're working for five days um maybe you want to talk to 14 people a week because you're going to work for seven days because you're pushing it a little bit more for a cent. And if you do that, and you decide on one person a week or two people a week, think of how much further you, ahead you'll be. You'll have at least 16 more people in your organization or 32, depending on your goal. That's huge for people. I mean, 32 people is, is 50 people or is the least amount to get to diamond. Um, uh, it, depending on the people that you're signing up and what they wanna do with this. But that will help your business immensely and it will help, of course, you getting to the Ascent adventure. So if you can break it down a little bit, um, and again, I'm happy to answer questions about this or anything, um, then you can kind of get what you need to do every single day in your mind. And then the second thing I wanted to talk to you about before I start with questions is just to keep yourself positive. It could be getting discouraging a little bit because maybe you're not quite there yet. Maybe you haven't even reached bronze yet. Um, maybe you haven't even gotten two points yet. And I wanna say to not be discouraged. You still have four months to get to the ascent. You still have time to do things, but you really need to keep a positive attitude. I know um, people have, I've talked to a few people and then they've gotten a little bit discouraged. And so I was, um, talking to my daughter earlier this morning about how she keeps herself up and she just likes to refocus her mind she talks to her upline and you know just very openly and just opens up and says here's what I'm going through here's what I'm feeling and um, an upline is a good choice of people to go to <clears throat> to help because they, they'll have ideas they've gone through the same thing over and over again um, she likes to keep herself very productive and keep busy. So she'll push herself to go out and talk to people like I'm talking about and, and, um, um, and keep busy as far as, I mean, you know, she's got a meal plan for when she gets home. So, so she does that on Sundays. She puts out all the meals that she's going to do. Just keep yourself productive. It keeps your, it keeps you much happier. Take care of yourself, exercise, get up. If you're feeling down and go out for a walk plug some music into your ears, some really upbeat music, and just get pumped and come back and you'll feel like Rocky, basically, <laughs> that you can conquer, you can do at this point and eat healthy. Um, some people get uh, down a little bit and they start eating sugar or something like that, comfort type of food. That can make you feel a lot worse. So I know it's, it's not as, you know, you don't crave um, a healthy, salad as much as you would maybe a warm scintillating cinnamon roll or something like that but may force yourself to eat healthy um, so that you feel really good inside i like to turn on music and just dance in the, in the house it just gets me so happy and and keeps me going and um and then then i'll turn off the music purposely and say okay now it's time to make my phone calls and then i'll sit down and make my phone calls and once you have the phone calls over, you feel so good, then you can go on to whatever you have to do during the day, like emptying the dishwasher and things like that. But if you've made your phone calls, you feel really good. You feel powerful. You, it's not looming there in the, fore, in the foreground that you still have to do that. Um, you've gotten it done. I like to do, get up and do things first thing in the morning because then I can check it off and think, I'm done. I can now do what, more kind of what I want to do. Um, so I hope those are some good ideas for you guys, um, and I would love to uh, open it up for any kind of questions or any challenges that you've had or any successes. I'd love to hear about those. 
And all you have to do is unmute yourself to speak. <laughs> and I hope hey, everybody. Daddy. Yes. Hi, it's Sandy in Happy Valley. Hi, Very Sandy. Good. So I'd like to share a little success. We've successfully put together a little account accountability group of women. Um, we've got five now, probably adding another one. We're going to have six. And we've, you know, selected it. Um, I've created a, a Zoom account so we can all meet on. And we've set an assignment for ourselves to go over. Um, we've each assigned um, two on Danielle Matthews' um, overcoming objections. And we've assi assigned a two objections to take care of each and we're going to get together this Wednesday and uh and in this and one of them is going to give the objection the other one's going to um be the You're one who practice. that's practice by being, you know what to do in objection cases and uh so that's a little success and we're all working on getting to Cancun together that is wonderful congratulations i hope i hope all your groups are working out um I have groups that still meet every morning and I assign them years ago um, because they become such good friends and their accountability and they work and move forward together and they're always talking about things. And so I think that's great, Sandy, that you did that and you're going to throw out objections. It's so wonderful to practice. I have them practice three-way phone calls with each other, their accountabilities. Um, it, helps, it helps the A and it helps the B in both of those cases. It helps you introduce somebody the proper way and uh, edify them, um, both people. The people that you're talking to, the expert, needs to be edified because this new person needs to want to really talk to that person and get their knowledge and feel that there's something in it for them. But then the person that you're introducing to the A, the expert, uh, needs to be edified too as a good friend or somebody that's very warm or somebody that you'd really like to work with or whatever it is. Um, so make sure you're edifying and introducing your people the right way and practice three ways. Do what Sandy's doing, throw out the objections and let each, each of you maybe say what you would say. Um, you can throw out one objection like this is too expensive and see what everybody in your group would say to that. It really helps you with new ideas about, you know, what to say, something like that but of course Danielle Matthews did a, a beautiful job on her uh, webinar uh, recording of that okay who else has a comment or question or anything Debbie this is Teresa Burton I'll jump in for a second okay um, we feel like Marty and I are trying to do this together and we we're, we're both really good at talking to people Marty's schedule is very very tight we can talk to people and we feel like we're making the invites, but our challenge is being able to connect with people to follow up to collect a decision. That seems to be where things are, are really held up for us. And even when we make appointments with people to follow up and they're not there, or maybe Marty's schedule, he can't stop at the moment to talk them, to talk to them or whatever. So we just feel like we have a lot of people in the funnel and, and we can't, can't kind of move them all the way through okay well the first thing is um if marty's schedule gets in the way sometimes um can you do a three-way phone call with somebody else and just yes. introduce them have you talked to them well um, we do yeah and you do do that okay and you are using three-way phone calls we're trying to as much as we can what we find is people that are really in our warm market um we, we do other things for three ways. I mean, sometimes they sort of get fearful when we talk about bringing somebody else in because they feel like, well, I trust you. Um, and so maybe a testimonial or something early on, but maybe a three way with somebody else a little bit later on once they feel, you know, comfortable with things and, and, and where we're going with them. I don't know. I think that will help you with your close rate if you use a three way phone call um, <clears throat> and or at least uh, well, let me just speak to the three-way right now. The three-way phone call is um, crucial, I think, to um, closing somebody. And you could bring them on by using different methods or means of bringing it on and just say, listen, um, I know that you have really wanted to make some extra money in your life. Let me put you on the phone with somebody who has been able to accomplish that and, um, and just tell them how they did it and a little bit of their, you know, problems, their 
their positives and their negatives and let you get a different um, view of that so that you can make an informed decision. That's one way. Or I, I know somebody that had one of the same health issues that you did. Let me put you on the phone with them. You know, if you can get something that is that they want in their lives, that's something about them and, and say, let me just put you on the phone with somebody who's had this very similar experience or issue or whatever it is. Um, they're more likely <clears throat> to say, okay, to having somebody else on the phone. Um, because you're going to make it friendly. You're just going to say, let me bring, she's a good, really good friend of mine, or he's a really good friend of mine. Um, just salt of the earth. It, it's, it would be great if you would just talk to them. And then you bring on your expert. And I think you might find that they can help you close people because you've already been talking to them. They do trust you. The trust is there. They know who you are, but somebody else is going to be able to um, bring it to a head and say, okay, what else would you need to make a decision? You know, it seems like this would be the perfect answer to your, to your issue that you have. Um, it can't hurt anybody, so why wouldn't you try it? Is there something else that you need uh, in order to make a decision? And that third party is able to say that without, um, without you feeling that you're pressuring somebody. Right. Okay? Yes, well, thank you. I wish I, I, that I could have you right on my shoulder every single time. Yeah. <laughs> Thank well, you. you could certainly call. I'd be happy to do a freeway um, for you. And just, you know, I always make them very friendly. I mean, that's exactly how I closed everybody when I first got started and still is. But when I first got started, I had Cindy Buck on the phone with me all the time. She was my sponsor. And so I would just call and book her for the 20 minutes that I had. But you could also book somebody for 30 minutes and just say, do you have time from 4 to 4.30, say? because that's a good time for all your people. And then you just make phone calls and whoever you get, you get, but you've got your, you've got your A on the phone with you and, and you can mute her out and say that you're going to bring her in. You can, you know, you can have the person answer and just say, have you got five minutes? And you and they say, yes. And you say, that's great. I just happened to have a good friend on. He had the same issue that you did. <clears throat> and I really wanted him to be able to talk to you or something like that. Okay. Well, or you can, yeah, or you can book them for 30 minutes and then and then really make the phone call. If you're uncomfortable with having them on the phone already, just make the phone call them. But they know that they're there for you. They're not going to answer another phone during that time. And from 4 to 4.30, they're all yours. Oh, that's a so nice trick that I hadn't considered before. Thanks. Sure, absolutely. That makes it much easier. Yeah, thank you. Sure. All right. That I agree totally. I think the part that Debbie's talking about <clears throat> is sometimes the part that we don't do. We set aside time to make our initial calls, but whenever you give someone a piece of information, you should set a time to do a touchback with them. And just like you're setting so aside um, time to make calls, you set aside time to follow up with the three-way, but you also let your people know would it be all right if I called you and you try to do that within 24 to 48 hours? So take a look at the video and then I'll call you on Wednesday. Is morning or afternoon better? That part, sometimes we don't do. And then we end up randomly trying to follow up. People aren't home because we haven't set that follow-up appointment. And then you have someone waiting in the wings to do three ways during that time and your prospect knows you're gonna call, and your um, expert knows you're gonna call. Right, if you can just have them in the background waiting, uh, that's perfect, and then they'll pick up the phone. So I don't know if I've said this on this call or not, but I'm starting to teach my downline to treat all of their uh, ASEA information like it's their baby because it's so precious and so valuable. You wouldn't call your neighbor and say, you know what, I have to go do something. Could you watch my baby? And have your neighbor say, yeah, bring her over and lay her on the porch. And if I get a chance, I'll take a look at her. That's not going to happen. You know, you've got to, you've got to make sure that they know they're watching your baby and that you're going to be back at a certain time to pick up your baby. You wouldn't just drop her off and then drive away and think, well, 
when she's had enough time to watch the baby, I'll, I'll go back and pick her up. Think That's of her as perfect. a baby. That's a perfect analogy. Thank you, Benita. <laughs> so, I, I have a question sure. about sort of the endless follow-ups with folks. I mean, do you, uh, you know, how do you, I want, I, I just want to kind of get them off my list and put them out in six months or something from now to check in. And I'm wondering what's a delicate way to really say, you know, is there, is there, is there a way to kind of say, okay, I've called to finally to get a decision from you. And, uh, is that, uh, is that pretty much it, I guess. And well, he, I, I make sure I always get permission, you know, if I knew of something, would you want to know more about it? Um, and uh, again, you know, if somebody asks me what I do, I say I market a health, cellular health technology that's 15 to 10 to 15 years ahead of its time. And there's not one issue that's come up that I haven't seen this help. And then they say, oh, can you tell me more about it? So I make sure that I'm very, very careful about saying, do you really want to know more about it? It's a little scientific it's you know it takes some learning about it and they'll say yes and i say okay so then at that point they've locked themselves in they've said yes they want to learn more so i can call people back 50 times i don't really care and just say you told me you wanted more information on this i am still trying to follow up with you would you please at least let me know through text email or a voicemail back that you are now not interested or if you really want more information because I'm just trying to get a decision. I don't want to waste any more of my time or your time. My time's yeah. too important. There's too many people that want to know about this. Yeah, there you uh, go. And so I, I become, I don't want to call it harsh, but I call, I become strong, strong powerful with yeah. what I'm saying, you know, if I've contacted them about 10 times at this point. Thanks. Sure, and I usually always get a response after that. And it's usually not that they're not interested still, they still were. <laughs> you know, the fellow that comes to my mind is, he's very interested, he's, he does his pendulum, he knows the product's good for him, he's, you know, but he, and he told me he's gonna order it, and I'm like following up, and it's like, okay, I'd like to, I'd like to help you with that now, let's, let's, let's get it going. And right. uh, it just seems to go on and forever with this guy. Um, I mean, you could so. say, do you, I mean, you've said this. I know people don't like to tell people no. It's fine if you tell me no. Do you right. really want to order this or not? Because I'd like to get the order in and get you checked off. And I will be following back up with you to make sure you're getting the proper um, support. Support and, um, and that you're getting the proper reaction to this. Right. Um, but, you know. I don't want to, I want to, get, I want to make more, I want to make more room in my mind. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> Thanks. Absolutely. Debbie, that's all fantastic. I love, um, I love how you're presenting that. Um, you mentioned that you're having people practice their three ways with each other. Can you go over that, how you're doing that a little bit, please? Absolutely. Um, I have told my account groups that um, to call each other, you know, take, you know, there's two and two basically. And um, so say for instance, I was gonna practice with Russell. So I'd call Russell and I'd say, Russell, um, give me the name of anybody that you could just call and say, we're gonna practice a three-way phone call with. It could be your mom, your aunt, your uncle, your brother, your sister, whoever, whoever, wouldn't really care and would do something nice like that for you. And, and he, Russell's going to call him and say, mom, I want to practice a three way with you. Is that okay? Of course, Russell. So then, um, Russell and I call his mother and Russell introduces me in the proper way. Then he introduces me to his mother in the proper way. And then I start in with the three way phone call and ask questions and make sure I know where she's coming from and, what she'd more like to learn about and all this kind of stuff. Um, and then I can present a little bit of it and, and, um, and tell them a little bit more about redox or the nutritionals or whatever she was interested in. Um, and then, and then Russell sees that I'm not trying to push or sell or do anything like that. And he sees how easy it is and that it's, you know, it's, 
it's kind of fun. I, I always love three ways because I didn't have to say anything. <laughs> I just introduced people and shut up. Um, so it was great for me. Um, but anyway, so, and it, it gives you practice. It gives the person that's making the, being the expert practice. And um, it's allowing you to see how easy three-way phone calls really are. And the more you do them, the friendlier you get. I mean, you have to think of it when you're the expert that this is a friend. Like I see Rosie on here. She's a great friend of mine. I love her to death. And I would just call and talk to her. <laughs> um, and that's what you're going to be doing on a three-way phone call. You're just going to be calling and talking to the person and asking them, you know, about their lives and about what's happening with them. And, you know, this technology was brought up. What, what were they interested in looking more at? Um, the health side or the financial side or getting whatever it is in their thing. And so that, that way you can kind of make the phone call go that way. And the more you practice that, I can tell you the better you get, the easier it is for you. You have no qualms in picking up the phone and doing a three-way or having a three-way done. You know, and I've done, I don't know, I hate to count, thousands of them at this point. And it's just, it's a joy because you're sharing, as Bonita says, your baby with somebody. This is your baby. This is very precious to you. This is something that you want everybody to know about. And I end up saying that to people most of the time. You know, I think every, I tell everybody about this because everybody deserves to know about this. I just said that to a lady at the airport yesterday. That's fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> sure, absolutely. So practice it for a few times and then, and then you won't be as afraid of it, I guess. It's, it won't be the unknown anymore. So you're, you're happy to do it. Yeah, excellent. Okay. I think um, it's, it's great. Uh, it's a great idea to inspire others to, uh, you know, to learn and, and to do more and, you know, and to practice more. So maybe, you know, for my team members, if I have my best friend who is willing to do 23 way practice calls, I can, you know, keep having them be the questioner. Um, sure. or, or the objectioner or whatever. Sure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. That's excellent. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Are there any other questions or comments? Make sure all your new people and stuff sign up for Zoom right away and also that they know how to do a three-way phone call with their phones. Some people just aren't even aware of how to do them. Debbie, yep. do you have like a list of questions in front of you to remind you what to say? Um, you know, even with, if the conversation is going smooth, I mean, I tend to get nervous and just, there's nothing in my brain sometimes when I in, invite people to do a three-way or try to do them. I, I don't know. Well, after, when I first started, and that was a while ago, um, I did have questions. And so you might want to just say, um, ask them about them, ask them if they have a family, ask them if they're married. Um, you tell me, or just tell me a little bit about yourself. Chuck Gates is one of the best ones, you know, get drawing people out. Tell me a little bit about yourself, you know, and, and, um, well, that's very interesting. And then he goes down that path for a little while. Um, do you have a family? Do you have children? Do you, um, have enough time to spend with your children? You know, things like that. Um, if they, I mean, uh, what do they do? Do they really like what they do? Uh, are they, um, I mean, I would use the word passionate. Are you passionate about what you do? Most people say no to that. Um, but some people love what they do, which is great. Um, people love to talk about themselves. And you'll find that if you ask questions, most people will open up and just continue to talk and talk and talk. You'll have to steer the conversation a little bit. Um, but if you're asking about them, that's one of the things I learned in, in the listening by St Stephen. Uh, forgot his name now. Anyway, it was in the attitude pack that ASEA first put out and I'd learned, I'd listened to it earlier. And um, there's a, there's a specific section in that about how 
he was doing a um, seminar and he just got the significant others to kind of sit and for, I think it was only three minutes, one person was going to talk and the other person was not going to say a word. And he came over because one of the people were just sobbing and he goes, what's wrong? Is there something wrong? And they said, this is the first time my husband has listened to me in 18 years. You know, so that is such a gift to people to be able to listen to what they're saying. And if you need to make a few notes about what they're saying, um, I always made sure that I, you know, and any new people I've made notes. I know their children. Sometimes I know their children's names. I know what state they live in, just different things or what country they live in. And um, I'm taking a few notes and you can even tell them that. Could you tell me that again? Because I'm trying, trying to take notes and, you know, about you because um, I'm very interested. And um, you said that a little too fast, you know, and they will be so excited that you're listening to them. And that takes the nervousness off of you and, you know, because you're just listening. And then, then you can say, you know, I would answer, I would ask as many questions as you can. Um, and then just say, without making this a long drawn out three way, because you don't want that to happen either. Um, you know, uh, Peter brought up this health technology to you. Is there a specific reason you wanted to look into this? Was it for you or someone you loved? I mean, you can kind of prompt them a little bit. And Did you want to look younger? <laughs> you know, whatever, some of the reasons that people look at this. And then that way you've learned about them and you can kind of then steer the three way in that way. And Nancy and Dick, if you have anything else to add, please feel free. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's really about, it's really, you know, you'll do better, I think, if you can try to uh, not think of these conversations as, as just focused on sponsoring somebody, but as getting to know somebody better. Um, and, you know, a, a good formula, and I've seen, I've seen my sponsor, Jerry White, do this many times, and he has kind of a formula for it. He said, Dick, the first thing you want to do when you meet, uh, when you're talking to somebody that you don't know very well or, you, or a complete stranger, is find something to compliment them on. Like you've got a, you know, I've noticed that you, you really deal well with, with customers. I, I really love uh, the customer service that you uh, deliver. Uh, and then say, you know, I, I don't know you very well, but tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, so you've said, you know, I admire something that you do. Um, I'd like to get to know you better. Tell me a little bit about yourself and then, and then just start asking open ended questions. And as long as they're opening up to you, you're trying to, you're trying to just establish a relationship. You may or may not ever bring up a SEA with them, depending on what you find out as you're chatting with them. Uh, uh, and these are what we call high value questions. Um, and you're in, but don't ask them just because you want to find out uh, if they're an ASEA candidate. Put, you have to sort of put yourself in a mindset that I really want to get to know this person. Whether or not I ever mention ASEA to them in the future, I don't know, but I just want to find out who they are, what they're about. Uh, and in the back of my mind, um, is there anything, I mean, we obviously know that everybody can benefit from this business or this product, but in the back of your mind, is there anything specific that we that they could uh, get a benefit from a SIA. And then like Debbie said, make some notes about this because you can always go back in subsequent conversations and say, you know, when we talked last time, you had mentioned that you uh, were having trouble making your house payment. Or when we talked last time, you mentioned uh, that you weren't uh, being, you weren't managing your back pain well or whatever. If I had something that could help you uh, would you be interested in learning about it? So, so you, first you establish who they are, what they're about, that they have a need, that they might be interested uh, in your solution. And now you're kind of off and going on the prospecting. And I would absolutely strongly recommend the three-way phone call. I've said for years that if, if I were to use one criteria to determine who was going to be successful in this business, it would be those who do three-way connect phone calls because unless you're already an experienced successful network marketer 
that's the best way for you to gain those skills and develop a business um, because they just work. Uh, and they're the most effective tool that you can use. And that's why all of the diamonds use them to get to diamond and they still use them uh, in their business as they're prospecting and recruiting. Uh, so yeah, I, that's about all I could add, I think, Debbie. No, and thank you. Just one more thing. Uh, Debbie has taught me a lot about gratitude. And I say a little, I don't know if you want to call it a prayer or an affirmation before I talk to someone and it's, please uh, let me help, you know, let, let me help 10 people this week. And you get, like Dick said, you get your mind in that, in that mindset where you let go of the outcome. And it's just about, I am here on this earth to lift up humanity and help people. Please help me do that. And uh, and I just say that over and over. And then it doesn't if it's not for them or they're not at a place where they can see it. Understand if they say no, it might be because because they just aren't aware enough yet to be able to see it. And then you always ask, do you mind if I check in with you? you know, in a few months to see how you're doing with your new project or whatever it is you learn about them so that you can always follow up because you care about them. Keep that in mind. Not, it's not about what you can get. It's about what you can give. And always, always ask for referrals. If you've gone through uh, the, um, the process of educating somebody about a SIA, uh, as a potential solution for their problems, they now know kind of what it is you do. Uh, and if you've done that in a polite, professional, um, not pressured way, uh, in, a, in a way of delivering service, then there's nothing wrong with saying, um, I, I, I can see now that this is not for you, um, but do you know of anybody uh, who might benefit uh, from what we've been talking about here? And you'd be surprised how many successful people in ASEA uh, were first introduced because they were referred by a friend uh, that, you know, that you don't even know, you've never met that person, and yet when you call them on the phone, oh yeah, that sounds interesting. So always ask for referrals, ask for people who they know who might be interested in what you have. And if you've approached that first person respectfully, there's no reason why they wouldn't give you a referral if they had somebody uh, in their mind. Thank you very much. That is very, very helpful. I will study. <laughs> Hi, Debbie. Hi, Anne. Hi. You know, how, how do you respond like in your first follow-up and they tell you that, oh, I, I was telling my daughter and she went and looked it up and, you know, they started the negative things. So how do you respond to that? Well, the first thing they I ask mouth, usually I say is, you know, on Google, you can find positive and negative about almost anything. So let me give you a place to go for some real facts. And I'll bring up, you know, Dr. Rob Board's uh, Redox Doc or PubMed.gov or something like that, or Dr. James Watson's article in the Lancet Medical Journal. And just say that these, you know, if you, if you go to Google Scholar, you're going to learn a lot about Redox. And it's all very positive because this is a huge area of science. And so please do your due diligence. Please look at the real facts about Redox. You'll find that they're extraordinary found, extraordinarily foundational to your health. They're imperative for you living, basically. And if you don't have them, you're not going to be healthy. And so at least learn about that and know that we are Redox molecules. And there's negative things about everything out there. You know, maybe they didn't try it long enough. Maybe they didn't use enough of it. You know, for whatever reason, they're bad mouthing it, or maybe they're pharmaceutically backed, because the pharmaceutical company certainly doesn't want us to to be out there. Right. Because if you're healthy, you don't take drugs. I always kind of pointed out in a not a very negative way. If you're sure. healthy, you don't take drugs. So do they really want us out there getting everyone healthy? And then they kind of go, Oh, yeah, you're right. So, and then that easily turns them around. Yeah, thank you. One thing that you can. Debbie, could I say something on that? Uh, sure. sure. Can you, this is Jenna. Um, I recommend that people familiarize themselves with the negative reviews that are on Google. Like I, as an associate, 
have gone out and read and listened to the various things that are online where, you know, there's an article that claims that this is expensive salt water. And there's an article that claims, you know, that the research studies that they did uh, weren't big enough. And, you know, I, I familiarized myself with the negative reviews Mm -hmm. So that I wasn't surprised when somebody came at me with those negative reviews. And then I actually talked to uh, Dr. Walker about those negative reviews and got his side of it. Like, why would they say that? And um, can you come up with an answer to rebut that? And so, like, if they say, oh, I just heard it's expensive salt water, we have that bioagilytics that verifies every, you know, periodically on the shipments that they are not expensive salt water it's redox molecules there's a test that they do that verifies that and so on and so forth and so I found that helpful that I was aware of what the negative reviews were out there and then I planned a follow-up statement to that sure absolutely and Dick Walker was just about to say something about it <laughs> yeah the other thing I was going to say is in your initial conversations uh, you can avoid some of that by, by just referring to our technology and not talking about our brand name. So just uh, when when they say, what is it? Say it's redox signaling molecules, not that it's a SIA. And so they're less likely to go Google the SIA and see that negative stuff. Now you can educate them about redox and what it can do for them. Once they're interested and they and they have a positive idea about it in their mind, Eventually, they're going to do that, uh, but they're going to look at it from a much different point of view uh, than if they start out uh, with those negative reviews. So, um, and I don't think it's underhanded at all. I, I talk to people not initially not about ASEA in particular. I talk about the power of redox signaling molecules to change their life and change their health. Uh, and then later on, uh, when they're ready to order or enroll, then we talk about ASEA. <clears throat> and I agree wholeheartedly. I talk about Redox. ASEA is not even on my business card. And Redox Molecules isn't even on my business card. I just say, if you want more information, I'd be happy to provide it. And I do just talk about Redox and what it can do, because if you look up Redox, it's all positive stuff, pretty much. If they see ASEA, they might Google that. That's where the negative stuff comes in, because people are trying to shut us down. And if you do make yourself aware, like Janice was saying, of what the negative responses are, and then you actually Google, I mean, you can actually tell them. There is one big negative site out there. It was published six years ago. He's never come back with a rebuttal. He's a pharmaceutical person who has bashed chiropractic and acupuncture and everything else, unless it's drugs and surgery. So if you wanna to listen to him, fine, be in that, be in that group. But he, of course, doesn't want us out there. So he put up this negative site. And he's never once come back to say, you know, that there is any proof of what he said at all. And we also have 33 patents on this. You cannot get patents on salt water. That's just impossible. And so, I would recommend not, not Googling all the negative stuff. Because the more you Google it, the higher it goes on the um, church. On the, right, search. on the search engine, right? And then, and then it's going to be the first thing people see. Just folk, and also whatever you you give attention to grows. Where you put your energy grows. Right. Just put your energy toward learning about what information is there that you can send people. Yes. So, Deb, and then uh, yes. Uh, this is Jenna again. Um, I also wanted to mention for anybody that's still learning to practice, like how do you do a three-way call? On Genie, there's a great little training that talks about how to do a three-way call effectively. Yes. Um, like one thing I didn't know that once you get your expert on the line, like my first three-way call I think I did with Nancy, and she started talking to this guy, and then I jumped in there and said a few things, and um, and then I was discrediting her as the expert, and I didn't realize that. And so I'm supposed to just let them know, you know, I'm just going to be here in the background, and I'll, you know, be available after you guys talk or whatever. But I didn't know you're just supposed to be quiet. And so if you listen to that training on Genie, it'll go over kind of three-way call techniques and etiquette and all of that. And there's also a great training on there called The Funnel for anybody who hasn't seen that. 
Um, and it talks about how we're not supposed to be trying to convince people to take a SIA, uh, but we're trying to sift and sort and look for people that are looking for a solution. But okay. if we keep talking to somebody that's being negative and that all they want to do is point out these bad reviews they've found and whatever, and we're continuing to talk to them, then that's kind of a sign that we're trying to convince somebody that's somebody we shouldn't be spending time with because they're just interested in, you know, rebutting you and find, go on to the next person who in your funnel, who's looking for a solution and who's not going to be discounting everything you're saying. Perfect. Thank you, Jenna, very much. <clears throat> there are some very good trainings on Jeannie um, and you all have it for free. So I would go in and start looking at those trainings. Debbie, are, are there any um, recorded three-way calls with the upper leaders doing any like practice, like trainings, you know, all in one spot where we can go and listen over and over again and sort of try to get the, the rhythm and, you know, how to, how to ebb and flow through these things. So I could constantly click on yours and listen to yours again if I really resonate with how you speak about it or, you know, sure. click on somebody else's. I don't think any of us have ever recorded them, but that might be a good training tool to put on a CU United. Um, we could certainly do some of those yeah, with I each think other. Would, even if they're just audio, audio files and we can listen to them as we're driving. Right. I think, right. Well, yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go what ahead. It, what it comes down to is, um, and I see Russell has a comment too. What it comes down to is you can only get so much training and that doesn't teach you how to be a professional networker you just have to do it you just, the way you learn a three-way call is to do a three-way call there's no other way you can't go to network marketing university what that means is you're doing you just have to do it it's it's a profession that you learn only by doing uh, so uh, trust that you already know everything that you need to know and when you do the three-way call you don't need to know any of that, but hearing your expert, that's how you learn all those things. Absolutely. So and you can do it. Trust that you can do it. Yeah, I can remember the first three-way call I ever made. It was in a, uh, another, our first network marketing company, first and only other one. But I remember being real scared about what, how this was gonna go. But I was doing it with a good friend of ours who was, uh, successful in that organization and I said we need to learn how to do these three-way calls so um, and and uh, she said yeah I've got somebody I'd, I'd like to introduce you to and I said well let's let's go for it and so we did it and you know it didn't hurt I didn't end up with any uh, bloody wounds I probably didn't do a great job the person did come in uh, but you know you get better at it and like Nancy says you you will only really learn how to do three-way calls by doing them. And if you're not the expert, all you've got to do is introduce the expert and then sit back and be quiet. So it's not like you have to know how to run the conversation. The expert will control the conversation. Uh, and you have to trust that we know what we're doing. We've done a bunch of these uh, and that we can help you by doing them. So you'll learn by doing, and before you know it, you'll be able to turn around and be that expert for your group. Um, after you've done half a dozen of these or so and, and kind of gotten the feel for the how they work and, uh, and, and, and that kind of thing. And then the other thing is when you're doing a three-way call, always tell your expert what it is that you would like to accomplish on that call. Are you trying to invite them to, a, to an event? Are you trying to close them and get them to sign up? Is this the first time they've really ever heard about this? So is it like an intro call? Um, so that your expert kind of knows where to kind of go with that conversation. That would be very helpful. Yeah, and usually if, if you haven't told the expert that, the expert will ask you that because they don't know where you want to go with it. So, um, and one way or the other before that. And you've probably heard all the Diamond's objections. Um, objection overcomes, you've probably heard most of the training that you would ever need as Nancy was saying. So to do with the three-way phone call, I mean, we could do it, um, but I think you have all your, I think you have all the knowledge already. There's Nancy said, I mean, sometimes we thought, I think there's, it's just paralysis by analysis. 
people sometimes just continue to want training after training after training. And like Nancy said, you can train yourself to become the best swimmer in the world, but until you jump into the water and start swimming, you're never going to get there. <clears throat> so that's, that's why I say to just to practice. And, you, and Buffy, you've got such a, a tremendous upline downline <laughs> that you can practice with a ton of people and, and just do some practices. It won't take you long. I think make, do three phone calls and you'll, you'll be there. It is a little bit nervous the first time you're doing one. But again, if you're practicing with somebody, you can take that nervousness away. You know, it's, it's Russell's mother, as I threw up before. <laughs> right, right, exactly. You're yeah. like, okay, you're the mom. I can just ask you questions, you know, that kind of thing. And then, yeah. you, just, then you just transfer that same energy. And again, it, someone brought up giving uh, compliments. Even if it's a brand new person that I've never, ever met before, I don't say this unless it's true, but if I've had people with such great energy on the phone and I go, man, you have really got some great energy. I just love talking to you. That just kind of takes down some of those walls or, oh, I love your sense of humor. You, you just made me laugh three times within a minute or something, you know, whatever it is, if it's true and, you know, if you can feel that or, or hear it. Uh, a compliment does a lot of really good things. I know I, I get, uh, sometimes I get on the phone with somebody and I just go blank when I want to talk to them. And I found there's an acronym that I can, I can keep stored here. And it's, perhaps you've heard of it, FORM, F-O-R-M. Right. And it gives me subject matters that I can talk to them about. Family, occupation, recreation, money. And so when I go, when I go, I, and I do, I'm like, and I don't know what to say next. I want to ask him a question and it just gives me a subject matter. And it really is amazing, Debbie. People really love talking about themselves. You could, I've talked to high level executives that you, oh, yeah. that, that, and you know, you start asking them about what they like to do, you know, on the weekends or, you know, or about their family and they just tell you stuff. And there's always something within what they're saying that you can appreciate. You know, like you were saying, to find something to appreciate. So when I go brain dead, which is uh, <laughs> paralyzed, I, can, I rely on that form to just help me. There's always the weather, too. <laughs> yeah, the weather. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't even tell you. There's a couple of times, I, you know, it's been pouring rain here or something. Like, how's the weather there? Because it's absolutely pouring here. And they're, oh, it's sunny. It's bright. It's, you know, and they just start talking. And it, I don't know, it's just like an icebreaker. It's like a friend, just be like a friend. What would you talk to a friend about? How you're not doing well and, <laughs> and uh, the weather. There you go. <laughs> just don't bring up in-laws or religion. <laughs> Stay or away from politics. the subject. Or politics, right. Yeah. <laughs> so. I, I want to um, just two things. One, um, I'm so glad that you all are back, the walkers, <laughs> Debbie. And, but, you know, your trip was such a gift to me, and I'm thinking a whole lot of other people keeping track of what you all did because that was just flat out fun to see. And good for you for taking that extra week. But I'm really glad you're back. And the training this morning, Debbie, just – for me, who can just go off in a whole lot of different directions, Chuck and I have a lot of things in common, actually. Yes. Um, <laughs> but, um, it's all good. Just, you know, just taking it step by step and really thinking, okay, 10 people, one person a week is really, really helpful. And what I'm noticing... I don't know what's happening. I think it could be these new supplements, but um, there's just, I feel like there's um, being able to just breathe and be lovingly present to people is, that's a gift. You're, you're giving by listening. Listening is a gift. Yes. Whether they do anything or not, just listening to them is a gift. And I'm having more fun just listening and not thinking about, you know, what's going to happen, but being lovingly present to a person, I tell you, y'all, it's just a joy, and it's a lot of fun. 
So welcome back, you guys, and thank you. Well, thank you. <laughs> it's good to be back, Rosie. It's good to be back in touch with people. And um, I 100% agree with you. Um, and I think I have to say very proudly that that's where Estia sets itself apart from any other company out there. I really feel that everyone I meet is very genuine. They listen, they come from the heart, and they really care about people. And you don't find that in many companies. So many companies just want to get you in and get you started. And I've been complimented hundreds of times now on the people in this company. And you're all part of that. And you're all leaders on this phone call. Um, and so thank you. Thank you all for being who you are. Because it is a gift to me to be proud to work with you and to be with you and to be associated with you. And that is a great gift. You know, you can be so proud of the company that you're with. And I can't thank you enough for that, for all being so genuine. Yeah. Group hug. <laughs> Love you group guys. Hug. That's right. Group hug. Thank, <laughs> you. Very true. Wow. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Debbie, <laughs> could I share uh, one little brief quote from Tyler's talk at Diamond Summit? Yeah, of course. He said, network marketing shrinks the world and expands your heart and that is so true wow, oh, wow. Especially with all the people that we we have on our teams and that we meet cross line and uh you know it's just uh it you know it really hit the nail on the head for what it is that we do thank you dick for even remembering that <laughs> i'm still unpacking my notes <laughs> so thank you that was it was a beautiful beautiful way to put things so it's just about the top of the hour. Is there any other last comments or a question? Debbie, this is Pearl. Tyler, Hi, Pearl. Spoke, Tyler spoke on Friday night on Jim Zoom. Uh huh. I, I don't know where that's. I think it's cap. I'm not sure exactly where it's captured. But if anyone hasn't seen that yet, oh my gosh, I just played that while I was asleep on Friday night. Is it on Difference Maker Nation? No, that's not part of, I don't think. It's actually on ASEA United. All of yeah. their talks are on ASEA United. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Well, the one from Friday night where, where Tyler spoke was absolutely rich. I've okay. heard the same thing. I've heard this. So, yeah. The Walkers and I and everybody on that trip will need to go back and listen to that. We heard it was it, really good. It's fantastic. And he, uh, he said that he put it on his private Facebook page so people can share it out and multiple oh. Folks of us have tried, and we can't get it to share out. Um, if anybody can figure that out and, and you know update that, it's there's a, the icon that says um, shared with Jim's friends, but unless he switches that to shares with public or shares with everyone, then we, we still can't share it out. But I did notice somebody else reposted it in ASEA United to share with everyone. And we still can't post it out. So several of us have asked, hey, this is the best thing we've seen in a long time. Can you give us you know, the ability to do that? And I don't know if it's, the, you know, what the parameters are, but so far we haven't been able to do it, but we'd, we'd love to because we're waiting. <laughs> it's okay. Flat, it's flat out. It's amazing. Amazing. All right. Um, I'll, send, I will I'll, send Jim an e I'll send Jim a text and ask him about that. Okay. And I'll send um, Tyler if he did it on his own personal. Did you click on it and make it big, like a yes. picture? Mm -hmm. Yes, and it and says, it, it then gives you share. share. Right. But then when you put somebody's name in there, it says only people who are in ASEA United can see this. So no matter how they've changed okay. it, and, and they even wrote, it's been made public, and we tried it after that, there's still something that's not quite allowing it to go out right. outside of ASEA United friends. Okay. So you have, to, you have to practice with someone who's not in a CA United in order to try it. Okay. Try it with your neighbor. You know, I tried it with my son okay. and he's like, ah, it says attachment unavailable. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, Thank we'll you. check into that and then get information out to uh, many people. We'll uh, do it through a CA United again, since this is, <clears throat> this is a whole bunch of different, different cross line people. So, okay. All right. Well, you guys go out and make it a great, great day. I love you all. And, um, and let's root for each other getting to a sin. Thank you, Debbie. All right. Thanks for including my mom. Thank you. <laughs>
Thank you. Of course, Russell. Bye-bye. <laughs>